What's going on guys, Gaston right here, and today we're going to talk about this product that actually mitigates the issues that the Canon R5 is having, or at least this is what the product is promising. Now, this is a product by the company Tilta, and it's called the Canon EOS R5 Cooling Kit. Let's actually talk about it. All right, so let's talk about the Tilta Canon EOS R5 cooling kit. What a name. So the first picture that I want to show you is actually the cage itself. And as you can see in this picture, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. You know, Tilta actually makes one of the nicest cages for all cameras. I love their design line, you know, pretty, pretty cool. But the next image that I want to show you guys is this one right here, where you can actually see how this thing mounts on the camera. So you're gonna have to flip out the screen and this thing is going to go in place off the screen when the screen uh, closes over. So uh, you're not gonna be able to close the screen once this thing is installed. Now, one thing that Tilt to say is that you're gonna be able to mount it on the cage itself. So this is not gonna be attached to the camera. Therefore, you're gonna be able to remove it whenever you're not using it. And right at the bottom, you can see the lever for a quick release of the vent. Now let's talk about some of the features of the unit itself. So as you can see in this picture, you can actually clearly tell that you have some vents on the side. You can see the clamp that I was telling you right there, the little lever at the bottom, the quick release, and you can see the fan right in the center. Really nice design, really clean lines of this unit. And let's talk a little bit about the uh, some of the features of this unit. So it has a fan that it has seven blades. Uh, it's going to spin at 6200 RPMs. It's going to produce some noise, 34 dB. So if you're going to be recording with a known camera microphone, this may be a problem. Also, this unit is going to weigh six ounces, so it's not going to be super heavy. It's going to be very light. Now, there's a highlight right here, and it talks about compatibility camera. And it says Canon R5. So this thing is not going to be comparable with a Canon R6. And remember, the Canon R6 has a smaller screen. Therefore, this is not going to fit. Maybe in the future, they're going to create a version from the Canon R6. We don't know. Now, another claim right here is the effect. Modular maximum temperature reduction, 76 degrees Fahrenheit, reduces temperature to 59 degrees within one minute. Now, this means that if the camera is heating up, you're going to be able to drop it down to 59 degrees Fahrenheit, or at least this is what I understand from what I'm reading right now. And then at the bottom, say maximum temperature reduction, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm assuming that, you know, when the uh, fan kicks in, it's going to be able to drop it down to 59 degrees Fahrenheit, like a quick jolt, but then it's not going to be able to keep the camera cooler for more than 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty good. Um, you know, it's a pretty good solution. Now, one of the claims that we don't have right here is for how long or how much longer you're going to be able to record, let's say, an 8K, 4K 60, 4K 120. None of those claims are on the website right now on the micro site. So what I'm assuming is that this is actually a product um, that is much more like a concept. Maybe they are currently working on it. There's no information about the price of this uh, product. There's no actually illustration of the product being used in the real world. So now this actually could be a good solution for a Canon R5, you know, not to overheat if indeed it does, you know, what it's supposed to do. But how many people are going to want to invest the money on something additional for the camera to do its job? So that is kind of like the problem that I'm having with this product, but you know, it may be that it's a really excellent product and maybe it's also super affordable. Who knows? At least someone is working on this and I'm assuming that more companies are going to follow suit and try to come up with similar uh, technologies. Now, the next thing that we see in the image also is this USB-C port. And at a glance, I thought, okay, this is how you're going to be able to charge the battery internally. But let me show you the following image we're going to be able to see some of the layers that compose this module. And let's start talking about the bottom layer, which is the cooling board. Now, the cooling board seems to be some sort of a copper that is going to be in close proximity with the camera, therefore absorbing all the heat onto the second layer. Now, copper actually is a great conductive of heat, and that's why I'm assuming that this is going to be copper. Now, on the second layer, we have the cooling chip. And the cooling chip may be maybe some sort of a cooling system, maybe liquid cooling, gel cooling, I don't know, or simply maybe where the sensors are located to actually control the speed of the fan and turn them on and off. Now we have a third layer, which is the, the heat sink. And as you can see, it has some sort of columns uh, design, and this is going to allow the air to cycle through, therefore cooling the entire module. Last but not least, we have the fan that is going to expel all the heat out of the uh, housing of the cooling module through those fans. So 
I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty clever idea, guys, but we have seen things like this for laptops, for example. I've never seen an implementation for a DSLR, you know, something like this that can slap on the back of the screen. Uh, so, um, you know, it's pretty unique. Now, I'm assuming that a lot of companies are gonna follow suit and create similar ideas like this one. That always happens. Now, the other mention is they are not telling us how much this thing is gonna cost, and, you know, I'm assuming that if it is under $250, you know, a lot of people are gonna buy this thing. Now, it is going to be a hard sell for some people to actually consider something else to allow the Canon R5 to do what the Canon R5 actually promised to do. That's gonna be the tough part right there. It is kinda like the tough part for me, but I'm getting the camera for photography, not for video. Now, I am going to give a try to this product. Tilta, if you're watching this and you wanna send one for review, I'd love to review it. Uh, if not, I just buy it myself, but it has to be under $250. Now, let me know what you think about this product, because the other thing is that there's no battery here that we can see, so we're gonna have to add also an external battery. And I think that Tilta could probably add a lithium ion battery in one of those layers and have at least, you know, a rechargeable battery, maybe 5,000 milliamp hours, 6,000 milliamp hours, and be done with it, make it a little bit thicker. So this is gonna wrap it up for today, guys. And let me know, are you gonna be considering something like this? Do you think that this is crazy, an overkill? Uh, should we spend more money after spending $3,900? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. And if you enjoyed this content, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more content like this one. Until then, see you later.